Welcome back to, uh, well, I guess, welcome to Cynical Gaming. Uh, yesterday, me and Indy Timmy decided to, uh, actually start <clears throat> streaming together on one single channel. And, so far so good. I mean, this is actually the first day. And we're actually going to be taking... Uh, turns streaming. I'll be streaming two days, he'll stream two days, so, you know, like that. So we're gonna be splitting up the week between me and him and going on like that. I'll go into more detail in uh, a video on my YouTube channel and an update video, but like I said yesterday, we're going to be continuing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now, uh, yeah. You know me as Rated J. I'll always be Rated J. And I'm always gonna love this game, so... We're gonna hop right back into this and... Start doing what we were doing yesterday. Starting right where we left off. And I know I'm just blabbering and all that nifty stuff, but let's continue. That way I could read people's lines. Yeah, and solve cases. So, uh, oh, I am so cringy, I apologize. Right, let's, let's, let's just, let's, let's get on with the game, yeah. Hi, boo. I'm sorry for that cringiness. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're picking up right where we left off, and we're in the investigation phase. On December 27th to 11 p.m., Wright & Co. Law Offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Oh, if you're uh, just coming into it now, Edgeworth said that he was part of a murder. And uh, we really don't know what the hell he was talking about. But he's definitely innocent for this case. We just don't know what the hell he's talking about. Ugh. So, yeah, let's hope, let's hope we find that out today. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. See? Thank you, Edgeworth, for, you know, helping me recap. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? S sw swooning? Me? Oh, oh, yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on, and tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? But, dude, she's like 17. Stop trying to rock that cradle. Right, Nick? Huh? Me? Uh, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you could do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me, yeah? Bow before your hero. You, you are no hero, butts. No damn hero. But what the hell you want? Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edwards would have been found guilty. It was a shock that he showed up the way he did. Like, out of the blue, right after the guilty verdict. He did save our asses, even though he's a dumb fuck. But seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Uh, edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick, I, I don't know. But 
what I do know is I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two. Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Ah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me. But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? <clears throat> Enough with the silent treatment. Edgeworth. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? He, he kind of was. You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were, in cl were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles. And Larry, they saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey Larry, what's he talking about? Huh, uh, um, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Yo, Larry Butts, I, I hate his character. He is too overly anime, and he's such a dipshit. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. Oh, no. A c class trial? You remember, Larry. Spring, end of third grade. A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Ah, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you forgot, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PA class. And was coming down with a... I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it. Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. That's ridiculous. I, I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it. Guilty, it, guilty of the money. Give the money back. You're such a meanie. Just admit it, you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. Oh, God. But yeah, this, this is ridiculous. A classroom trial. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. Uh, he shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in this trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. M miles Oh shit, little edgy. Let him go! <laughs> it wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting, you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why your honor, this boy, is innocent. But, Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's, we don't need proof. We can say sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. 
Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. I bet you, I bet you anything, it was Larry who stole the kid's money. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. Good on you, teacher. But you're an idiot for letting all them kids gang up on one boy without any proof. Shouldn't let kids gang up on any other kid anyway, but still. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Oh, she's crying! <gasps> she thought it was so sad! Mm-hmm. 20 on Larry. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. Y yeah, he did it. He did it. Larry so stole that money. That's when I learned what I meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So, I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Uh, and it smells like he stole that kid's 30-something dollars, honestly. After the trial. Anyway, Edworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. Aw. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my daddy. Too bad he didn't. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident, right? I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. It's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edward's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Oh, damn. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. What the hell happened to him? The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided... Wait, you don't mean... That's why... That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. It's smart. In court. It's smart because Phoenix knew that their pads would cross us sooner or later, and it just so happened to be his second trial. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who could help him. Whoa, Nick. So, so is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. <laughs> oh, Nick, Nick. Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. And very, very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I could clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Uh, I kind of want to go over the F, right? <laughs> but why? Why the F, right? <coughs> Maybe we should go to the detention center first. December 27th, detention center, visitor room. You look as grim as always. Huh. 
Um, Mr. Edgeworth? I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it, in third grade? Lunch money? Oh, all right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth didn't know. That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Sounds a bit obvious about Edgy. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple to a fault, even. Well, maybe yeah, but... Uh, I think you changed too much, Edward. Perhaps. Let's see. Let's see what Edgy has to say. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Ziani Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day 15 years ago. Oh lord, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxy oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence innocence. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Wow, okay. I mean, I could see that. It was only them two in that elevator. And he's not gonna shoot his father who he looked up to. So... Jesus. I feel so bad for this man. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. That, that sounds like Von Karma. <coughs> Definitely. Perfectly, though. In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty, perfectly. In any case, it's not, well, impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a, a guilty sentence tomorrow. He, he's right. Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. <laughs> no kidding. 
Huh, well, um... I don't know, uh... Let's go to Grouseberg, see if he's alive. He's out again. When does he work, anyway? I don't know, don't be harsh. Guess we'll have to come back later. God damn it. Go back there. Go to Criminal Affairs. December 27, Police Department. Criminal Affairs. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe, he won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. Oh, he shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. So, what they're saying is... Von Karma has made the old man disappear. Oh no! Do we still have the bird? <laughs> Good luck, Gumshoe. Alright. Let's go to Gord Lake. It's pretty much the only option we have, really. Oh god! <sighs> hey, pal! A long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Close one today, eh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Why would you do that? Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Uh, thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. You gotta get to that safe. Yeah, I'm trying to. Come, what? Hey. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Yeah, I really want to get over to there. See if we... We know the case number, so... Not the case, the uh, safe number. So we should be able to get into it. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch my... Catch me a criminal. Thank you, Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one more thing. He... And no one could go into the woods today. The woods? Were a lot of us camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one could go in for a while. I guess a lot is in a lot of trouble. But I guess so. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Alright. Woodlake Public Beach. Don't run into Larry. I don't want to talk to Larry. Huh? A steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. But who cares? We got to get in here. December 27th. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. Uh, I know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Oh god! What are you doing here? Uh, hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg? This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edward's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edward should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, oh what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Was he the murderer? <laughs> Who knows? We need to get in here. December 27th, caretaker's shack. Nobody's home. Hello. Hello. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. 
Hello, hello. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. But hey. He keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. <laughs> what the F? Where... Were you there, fat man? Suspicious as whoop. <laughs> right? The only thing in there is a letter. A letter? Aw, oh, boring. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? No, no, no! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be in here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Oh, you get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robin Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edwards out to the lake and getting on the boat firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect de- Oh, this letter just saved Edwards' ass! Yo, this is awesome! What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. Who sent it, though? That's the thing. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Oh, this is so good. We should actually take a minute and check out exactly what we have in the evidence. Because this... I'm always forgetting what we have. Hopefully I don't forget again once we get to court. But I know we have Robert's autopsy. We have the enhanced picture. The picture of Misty Fay. The overhead map of the lake. The bullet found in the victim. The gun. We have that, Polly. We also have the the DL6 case file. The case summary, date 12-28-2001. Location, elevator, district court. Air and elevator was oxygen, oxygen depleted at time of innocent. No clues found in the scene. <laughs> victim data. Uh, Gregory Edgeworth, age 35, defense attorney, trapped in the elevator, returning from a lost trial with his son. Miles Edgeworth, age 9. One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Now this makes things even worse. Who really did it? Was it the killer or the father? Or was it a relative of the killer? Someone Edgeworth put in jail when innocent. Uh, that's the only thing that I think it could be. Honestly. Uh, I'm with you there, but... It... It's the who. We have also the third page suspect data. Yanni Yogi, age 37. Court... Court Baylor. Trapped in elevator with the Edgeworths. Memory loss due to oxygen de deprivation. After his arrest, fiance Polly Jerkins... Jenkins committed suicide. Aww. Okay. We also have the murder photo of his father that shows him dead in the ground, on the ground, but it also shows a second bullet hole in the thing and what we just picked up, the letter. Um. 
I don't know. Maybe we talk to Polly again? Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's going to hate me. Polly. He named the bird after his wife. <gasps> oh, he did! But this is why we make a good team, boo. <laughs> okay, um... I guess we can just move. Let's go back to, um... The dude's office. And, uh... See about whatever. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get go. A woman! You were wasting time by talking to me. You son of a bitch, where are you? Maybe detention center. Oh, hey, hey, dude. Um. Somebody hates you. <coughs> Edward, see this letter? Mm -hmm. This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. Let's see. Revenge? On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant who got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So he was following this letter then. Which reminds me, there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men. Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait. Maybe. Maybe he's talking about the Statue of Limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. Well, what is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yoni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. We called it, boy! <laughs> oh, shit. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. Uh, that's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed staring up at the ceiling. Whatever happened to his mom? In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Oh, huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right? Yeah. There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I don't know whether or not I should tell you. Yeah, you should! If it's gonna help the case, you should. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. 
I think... I think the time has come to tell all. Oh, here we go! For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. No oh, help, I can't breathe. Quiet, is it quiet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't shout, it's okay. We see that all. I I can't breathe. You you're using up my air. The light? Stop breathing my air! I'll I'll stop you! Uh what? What are you Stop breathing my air? No, father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Bang! Uh, oh, shit. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but it's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me f sane for the last 15 years. He does think he killed his dad, yeah. I don't... I mean, it could have happened when he threw the gun. Finally here. A level I was recording went on way too long, th longer than I expected. Uh, well, we... Uh, to catch you up, Indy, we found a, a big piece of evidence. That basically proves that Edgeworth is innocent. Um, but right now he's going through the fact that he thinks he actually killed his father. So, we're, uh, we're working on this. <laughs> but what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories and self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Oh shit, interesting. By the way, I heard the host thing go off while recording. LOL. <laughs> Wait, Edgeworth, you... You mean... It was me. I was the true criminal in the DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about the DL6. It's, it's gotta be Grossberg. Um... Uh, we... Yeah. Be there, you fat fuck. Like I should be talking. Her mom. By the way, forgot to record a thing about our Twitch. Only a... Only be a few. Alright, man. Her mom... Well... Okay, I get why you're saying her mom, but... Where is her mother? We don't know if she's still alive, dead, or whatnot. She hasn't come up. But this guy worked on that case. So, I think it's Grossberg. M Mr. Grossberg? Ah, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. My, 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 my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened. It's Mr. Edgeworth. He... he... Okay. 
I see. Maybe he knows what her mother said. He might. That could be a lead. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's o only a only a dream. I, I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Well, also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to summarize that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagine, Miles Edwards threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. Yeah, but I can't consider that murder. He was trying to help his dad. I don't I don't see I don't see how the court could see this but anything as an accident. And honestly, he was a young boy. He didn't know what the hell to do. So I don't think you could arrest him on those charges. No, oh, I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the Statue of Limitation so close. <sighs> I want to present this first. Oh, ho, ho. so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. Nice, dude, nice. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. If that doesn't add up, if the mom talked with the dead dad, how would it have been edgy? I, I don't maybe the ghost was fooled. I don't know. <laughs> he won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter? I've seen his handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote it? Um, It wasn't him, and it wasn't him. So, it had to be... Von Karma? Hmm. Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma. Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait! You're right, my boy! What? This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time in court reports. What? But, but that means... The, the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Gregory Edgeworth? He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Von Karma were he alive. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow, so tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the Statue of Limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage 
the DL6 incident has done will never be erased. Okay. But, I mean... Come on, but why teach Edgy? I'm so confused. Unless he doesn't want Edgy to take his place. That could be something. What do you know about Edward's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Maya Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result, he has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And he lost. And died in despair, as it were. Let's see. Oh, when Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. Oh, lordy. Yo, why does this gotta be so intense all the time? I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Okay. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was... You see... Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Why would the ghost lie? What What is that getting him? Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. If it is, tr if it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Again, he was a child and he threw the gun. It's not like he pointed the gun at his own father and shot him. It was an accident. Oh no. But, how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court. And Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscared. Unscared, or scathed, or whatever. Okay, what happened in the trial between Edward's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence. It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Giving him the motive to want to hurt Edgeworth. Unless he knew Yogi was helping Vaughn with the fake stuff. Huh. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Vaughn Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Vacation. Yes, an unusual event for the man. 
That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or, uh, to the mountains? Rip, babe. LOL, you followed in Edgy's dad's steps of annoying Vaughn. D no! D d I ain't dying! Oh! Oh! You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. You gonna kill me! In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Connor is going to bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Mm, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, uh, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. No, it's not! For like a, a nine-year-old kid who didn't know what the hell he was doing, and you could still use the case that the there was oxygen deprivation. So he wasn't thinking right. Oh, it pisses me off. <laughs> I know that. I, I just believe in Edward's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Mr. Edward admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Kersberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In, in fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. Um... I'm betting there were two shots. This isn't the USA, but yes it is! This is based in LA! <laughs> <coughs> Maybe we show him this? This is Internet to Pay. Ah, okay. Afraid? Yeah. Okay, let's move to the detention center. Hey, yo! No. Is that? Um. This. It was a case that changed my life. Shut up, motorcycle! And tomorrow, on December 28th, its statute of limitations runs out. Tomorrow, could that be a co coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. Meaning someone else had to have shot the dad. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. The, it bugs me that I don't know, really. It's... God damn it. <laughs> Where the hell? Criminal Affairs. Alright. December 27th, Police Department Criminal Affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, it's you! I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe has pounded the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the record room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But, I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. Ah, oh, shit. You could go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the record room. Nick, let's hurry. Oh, I bet he's trying to take all the DL6 evidence. Oh, no. December 27th, Police Department Record Room. Dusty as always. 
We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. But Parna. This cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons, others are question marks. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think these clothespins are for? He's forging shit. He probably is forging some. No touch, uh, it's evidence. There are shelves stuffed with case files in the back of the room too. Forgotten cases rotting away for eternity. Nick, let's get what we need and get on out of here. All this dust is getting to me. <laughs> here are the files, collected case reports. There's quite a large volume of reports here. Wow, these are all case reports? Yeah, it's like a graveyard for police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in here too. <laughs> Quietly gathering dust. What the hell do we do? It looks like there are files inside the glass case. This case is so dusty I can't see what's inside. And it's locked. They must keep important case files in there. So, yeah, I guess, uh... Huh, one of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved case evidence. Hmm, unsolved cases. Nick! The files for DL6! It's completely yet. He took everything! I knew he was gonna take everything! Piece of shit. What? What are you doing in here? Eek! Oh, he... He looks even more like Dracula face forward! <laughs> Von Karma? You. How did you know my name? Uh. But you have some info on it. Yeah, we have the stuff that we took the prior day. Have we met? What, what are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edwards' defense team. Editing out a lot of us uh, from my vlogs takes a long time. Dude, um, is my enemy. I understand. Defense team. Uh huh. I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I. Uh, no! I can see how this guy was Edward's mentor. Um. Okay. Edward. Um. Mr. Edward is your student, right? A romanticist uh, who still can't shed his veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Huh. So you did. But what I don't get is... Why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? We're only human, Tim. <laughs> Even outside of court, he's an ass. He's born an asshole. <laughs> the son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of his trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. 
You know that Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Farmer is going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. Oh, can already see the horns and tail, Satan! <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna shove it in his face. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Y Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. Oh, he admitted! So I probably just popped a mic like a mother for I am so sorry, people. <laughs> so so you admit it. You you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. Oh, he's gonna take it from me! Fuck! You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What what? Yeah. What is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed, 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People won't die from it, usually. Satan! <laughs> you shouldn't have shown it to him. I know! Now give me the letter. No! No! What? What are you? Nick, run! Oh, shit! <laughs> I got her zapped. Oh, I'm horrible. I'm a horrible person. Mamaya! Out of my way. Oh, I got zapped, too. Oh, he took my evidence. He got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Oh, I... I legitimately feel sick to my stomach right now. This this is straight up bullshit. Just, just straight up. Wait, Maya jumped first? Maya, is she okay? Ma Maya... He zapped the shit out of us. Maya, open your eyes. M Maya. The letter, did he take it? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now, when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Aw, it's not her fault. It's my fault for showing him. I'm so sorry, Maya! Uh, there has to be some way I can help her. I'd better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 ev incident evidence number seven taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. Ooh. I remember Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. Bullet stashed in a pocket. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. No, she's not. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Oh, well, that could have gone a whole lot smoother. A whole lot smoother. Jesus. Okay. We found good evidence. We got the shit zapped out of us and had that good evidence stolen. We found out more about Miles Edgeworth. And we found out this dude is Yanni Yogi, for certain. But 
that doesn't mean we're going to win this case. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure that we might have a redo, or, or like first redo. But uh, we're gonna go on to it right now, and dear God, I messed up. But then again, that's probably how the story had to go anyway. I hope. But, oh dear lord. This is it, Judgment Day. Today things are going to get settled at last. A, a lot of things. At least a lot of things. Wah! <laughs> What's the big deal? So, sorry, Nick. Honey touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my running with that stun gun yesterday. Oh, she's, she's Pikachu shocking everyone. Anyhow, today's the last day of the child. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What, 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 what are you doing? Sorry, uh, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, uh, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Oh! Ah, <laughs> uh, <Belle. laughs> She got freaking... She got the cup! Sorry, Gumshoe. It's got it into that girl. Detective Gumshoe? Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? I have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. It took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Oh, shit. That's right. December 28th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Let's get edgy off. Yeah, you know, the guilty, non, not guilty plea. <sighs> Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh... Right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be all into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Carver, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Okay. Now he's asking me to cross-examine him. In every other case we had with this dude, he tried to stop me from cross-examining any of the people he put on the stand. So what is that Dracula-looking scumbag trying to do? Ugh, okay. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. There's something up. He's, he's trying to get us to do something. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he is currently lost the memory of his name and identity. 
Witness, why did you run away yesterday? Hey, Satan. The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Pop! <laughs> oh, God. Why I left court? Uh, I'm really sorry about leaving yesterday, like I did. But I was running away. I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyway. Uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. He went to go get food for his bird, really? Mm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi and I'm going to prove it. Okay. Oh, why I left court? I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I wanted to buy some food for Polly, see? I don't know. The first three I didn't push on because it was stupid. You lost much of your memory, is that correct? Ah, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Ah. Or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory. You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has lost no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Uh, how am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old Hodge's head? It's impossible. Huh. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. <coughs> uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. Let's press on that and see what happens. I can say you had no motive. I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing oh, now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Oh, I hope we can prove this. Order, order. Mr. Wright, there is a seriously serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying, are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh, now this is interesting. I would like to know myself, so who is he? You already know who he is, you freaking devil! <clears throat> Play dumb Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. Name's Yanni Yogi. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi, that name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. Figures the judge would have heard it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. And I have the handcuffs. God damn it. Tisk, tisk, tisk. 
jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law. As you may recall, you need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Oh, oh, oh. oh you're, you're on to something. Libby, you are on to something. You need to tell me, please. Pretty please? Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? Fingerprints. There has to be fingerprints. I mean, we don't have any fingerprints, but maybe they could get it from, like, the old case. It's okay. It's actually quite simple. If he was a bailiff, he has to be in the records. Yeah, you can't get a security job. I should know. I've had my fingerprints taken a couple times. But you can't be a bailiff or a security guard or a police officer or anything like that without having your prints on record. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprint. Are you watching this? Are you watching somebody better than me? Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. Let's see, that makes sense. <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. Hi. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no finger. How does he have no fingerprints, Satan? How? Did you burn them off? How? What? What? No fingerprints. Boop! Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff, yup. Son of a bitch! What? How do you sneak? You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. My mom was in school to be a lawyer. She taught us to pay attention to the small details. I love you, ma! <sighs> oh, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his eye. Blood, dude! Take his blood! Something. Stool sample. Pee! I don't know. Hair. Oh. <laughs> tisk, tisk. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh, hmm. It seems that the case has been decided. No. No. I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? <laughs> disc, disc, disc. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief. Yeah, bring his damn bird in! <sighs> Very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Chris examined his parrot. What? What is it, Nick? No! You're not going to... Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot! I'm done. I'm done. He's going... I'm done. No. No. You can't! Okay? It's a bird. It's a bird, Phoenix. 
Burr! <sighs> I, I didn't even know we could put pets up on court. On the stand. <laughs> order, order. Uh, well... Sad if the bird helps more than Larry. Uh, well... What do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce, I object. <laughs> Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Huh. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, <clears throat> and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Fucking bird. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? I... I... Sure. Let's talk to a bird. Let's put a freaking bird up on stand. Let's see what the bird has to tell me. Polly want a fucking cracker? I will cross-examine her, your honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. <laughs> I'm there with you, homie. Two peas in a pot, I tell you. <laughs> Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of them. We fucking got a question in a bird. Except a parrot. <laughs> Except a parrot. She's our last chance. A parrot is our last chance to get a man off from murder. Oh, crying. At least I think so. <laughs> oh, be the bring in the parrot. <laughs> fucking question of bird. Oh. <laughs> That's quite the bird. Please tell us your name. Oh, crying. <laughs> name. The witness is ignoring me! <laughs> it hurt to be ignored by a bird. Oh, very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please, uh, testify for us. Who's your owner? <laughs> yeah! Hello! Hello! Squawk! Fucking <laughs> hell. Whew. Certainly the most concise testimony I've ever had up so far. Very well, begin your cross-examination of the parrot. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. <laughs> what are you going to do, Nick? Polly want a cracker? <laughs> I, I don't know. What do we do, Maya? It's just gotten even better for from so intense to fucking ridiculous. It has. Squawk! Who's your owner, Polly? Hello, hello, squawk! <laughs> well, I guess we should try to get some information with the fucking bird. <laughs> We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. What do we press a parrot? <laughs> it's a fucking press a parrot. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. It's a bird, Phoenix. <laughs> How are you to testify? Demar, you, you talk to her. Ah. Push it off on poor Maya. Um, I have we forgotten something, Polly? That's our recall. At least the bird knows some stuff. <laughs> I guess it will be good. As I recall, two days ago. 
Oh, I'm sorry, but don't you find this hilarious? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squack! <laughs> don't forget DL6! Oh, what's her name? If I could get Polly to say that her here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello, squawk! <laughs> yeah, she's a big help, all right. The, that's not what you're supposed to say. We forgot something, we forgot. Hello, hello, squawk! <laughs> Oh, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the stream, everyone. I'm sorry, this is just killing me. Oh man, I'm crying. I'm literally crying over here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're making a bird testify. Oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. We, why won't she say it? Is there something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait, don't tell me Von Carver expected this. He could have retrained the Barry, could he? Oh, I bet the asshole did! <laughs> did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Oh, I know this. We got more things we could ask. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get away. But the name, Boo. I want you to testify. Why are you talk to it? What's your name? <coughs> Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, squawk! <laughs> Mr. Wright, I think we've established that the parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? This actually does. The bird may have just helped us. Yes, it does. Uh, fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us proof. Nick, do you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Oh, uh, listen. We're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof of the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity. Ugh. The DL6 case file. That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where is the file? Where in this file is the information connected to the parent's name? The suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Huh, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Oh, exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Objection. Ah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? Dude. She's only seven. Huh, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting close. Yeah, I do have the key, uh, the safe. One more. If we could just get one more piece of evidence. Right. But what? Huh. Very well, witness. You may continue. 
locked! Oh shit, I forgot to go back. What? <laughs> Let's push the parents aboard. And it's you? Yeah, yeah, we heard this. Okay. Maybe I'll get her to say the safe number. Uh, the safe? Why? I don't know how this is gonna help. I'm out of ideas here. No, the safe number... The safe number helps because it... It's part of the, uh, the DL6 file. It's actually the date that it take it took place, 1228. Which is the same date that they're on now. Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? I'm just really glad the bird actually fucking helped. 1228! 1228! My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you are claiming that the number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! <laughs> Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's identity? Oh, we got you, Von Karma. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Is that right? Where in this file is something relating to that number? The case summary. It's on the case summary page. That's why I looked through all this stuff earlier. The case summary. Specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah. He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to date. Ah, that is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. No, you're not. Okay, Satan? No, you're not. Sit your ass down and take the L on this one, okay? Because we just figured out who this asshole is. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. Ugh, that's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. <laughs> Thanks for your pins, Satan! <laughs> right? <laughs> True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. But, what are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop! Immediately. Oh, the bird did it. The fucking parrot did it. We test. We made a parrot testify, and he did it. How? How much more ridiculous can this damn game get? Don't get me wrong. I I might sound like I am hating on this game. I effing love this game, okay? That was some bullshit. That was a ballsy ass move. Freaking Polly. Po yeah, Polly want a cracker? You know, like squawk! Like, who knew that was gonna help us get a dude off from murder charges? A fucking parrot! Parrot. Witness. Tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. Ah? Oh, he looks so different! I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think, finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. 
acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Did we just save Edgeworth? Order, order. Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. Finally a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. He was a child again. A child you were going freaking crazy and you attacked his dad and he threw a gun. He didn't point and shoot. He didn't uh, he didn't attempt to murder anybody. It just happened. I have no regrets. Wait a minute. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty. I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth himself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Oh, I don't think this case is over. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I still say Edgy did kill him. There were two shots. I saw no room for error in this confession. Then the defendant Miles Edgeworth is innocent. In this case, at least. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. <clears throat> Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds a defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty! Okay, we won this, but I still have a really bad feeling that Edgeworth is going to put his own foot up his own ass. This is all. That is all. This court is adjourned. There it goes. There did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What, what do you mean? I am not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edward is trying to confess he's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh-oh. What do I... Raise an objection! objection! The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edward's outburst. Of course! Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? Fucking Larry Butts. I believe a certain witness to raise an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. 
I must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Oh, this isn't gonna be good. This isn't gonna be good at all. At all. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident, it was me. You were a child. You threw a gun. You didn't mean to kill anybody. You didn't point it at anybody. You just threw it. It went off and hit your dad by accident. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty of DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Baby, baby, yes, yes. What, why? If you have something to say now. Check the photo, damn it. Let me see it. Uh. There. I mean, there is a gun, uh, a hole in the window there of the elevator, but I, I don't know. <laughs> order, order. This is certainly unexpected. Two shot. Th Hold on, one sec. The DL6 case files said it was uh, the weapon was fired shot uh, twice. It says it right there. The defendant declared innocent is confusing to a different confessing to a different crime. It wasn't a through shot. They pulled the bullet from the heart. Yeah, they did. Then who shot the gun twice? Was it Yanni Yogi? Like, do we have to pull his freaking parrot back in? Squawk! He did it! There shouldn't be a shot through the window thingy. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Ah! It's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think... I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. For it is adjourned. Only if Edwards would have shut his damn mouth. Seriously. December 28th, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. <coughs> I'm sorry, Wright. I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you kill your dad? The guilt is eating at him, but I still don't think he did it. I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstance. This is crazy, just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Uh, isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. Wh what are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. But I don't believe you're a nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent, trust me. Right. 
Come on, dude. We believe in you, man. December 28, 2.30 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Well, to be, fair, to be fair, if Edwards wouldn't have picked up the gun, he wouldn't be on trial in the first place. We're done with that. We declared him guilty already. Also, welcome to the, uh, the stream. Thank you for joining. Yeah, we're done with that. We got him the not guilty plea for that. But his ass went ahead and admitted that he was the person who ended up killing his father in the DL6 case. So now we're trying to save his ass from that. Alright, there's the gravel. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though, po though pointless, and let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. Bullshit! You don't want to run it by the book, you cleared out all the evidence! Frickin' Dracula looking mother- Yeah. I see. Does the defense have any objections? Get the bird back in here, it'll help us! <laughs> no, your honor. Von Garma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? He? Oh, we have to prove he didn't shoot his daddy. Yeah, here we go, people. Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Hopefully you change that and become, you know, a good guy. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter in court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I could get it to work. Please, please. Oh, God. Here we go! The DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Oh, Jesus Christ. How is that going to help any of us? And, uh, eh, welcome to anybody that's actually just come out to the stream. Feel free to, uh, talk and chat with everybody. And, um, you know, help my ass out. That'd be awesome, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. Well, we were stuck in that elevator, and here's the evidence that we don't need at the moment. For five hours, the oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Ah, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. I'm alive. I'm glad you're alive, Indy. <laughs> uh, let's keep it that way, buddy. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. The DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. We're gonna press on everything. Hopefully something good will happen. What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Okay. Yeah, Yogi. Hiya, boo-boo. <laughs> These people think I've done an evil doo-doo. They got me that picnic basket. <laughs> oh, God. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case. It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. 
what was... That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. As we want to leave, an earthquake struck the... Trapping us in the elevator. Alright. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. Oh, I'm sure Karma remembers every detail. I'm sure. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up, what happened next? <laughs> I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying that you threw a pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. Okay. The gun fired once. Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot, and that horrible scream. You have the proof right there, Boo. I do, I know I do. I don't know which one to use, but I do. The scream. It was a terrible scream, I remember it that day. It's something about this one. I think it's the DL6 file. I'm gonna check that though. I think it was this one, the victim data that if this works, which it did, the music stopped, I'd have to do that. F, I'm dying. I swallowed pop the wrong way. You don't swallow pop the wrong way, man. You gotta be careful with that stuff. <laughs> It'll kill you. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? No, it is the victim because it the victim, the victim part of it says it was fired twice. Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard that shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Ugh, Satan! You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you, boy? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? The victim data. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly the murder weapon was fired twice. You enjoy dragging out your objections, don't you, Satan? That's true. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? The murderer. The murderer fired the shot. If this is how we're going with it, the murderer fired the second shot. Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? But here's the thing. When Edgeworth threw the gun and it went off, Edgeworth heard the scream. That was the first shot. So do you think that was the bullet that went through the window and it hit somebody on the other side? That's kind of where I'm at at this point. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. 
What? Hmm. Uh, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. He threw it! He didn't fire it! Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Uh, the bullet. Hmm. Once again, judge's favorite weapon. Or, word. Oh. Uh, of course I have some proof. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? what? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma. Save your surprises for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? I do! Damn it! You have to present it! Take that! Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired where? Take that! Attack your hit points directly! <laughs> your, your honor, please. Please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. Bingo! Take that. The photo shows the two holes. The bullet shows it was from the gun. I should be obvious. The contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor. Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from this pistol. Yet there was also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Huh. Oh, I think we're on to something, guys. I think we really are. Uh, order! Order! <laughs> Karma! Karma for Von Karma! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Greg Gregory Edwards' heart, the other hit the elevator door. Satan killed him. Yo, uh, that would be a huge shock, dude. I don't think it's gonna come to that, though. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. But Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? You saying Satan isn't that- I'm not saying he's not that evil to kill somebody. But, I'm just saying, like, none of the evidence points to this man. Yeah, he set up the one murder case, sure. By telling Yanni Yogi to take revenge. But, I don't think- think he killed uh, Edward's father unless he's unless he was really that mad over that one point being on his uh, perfect record the murderer of course I mean I'm just saying it'd be a shock Tim how would he have gotten into the elevator again the elevator was like busted it wasn't moving they were stuck in it I knew I should have stuck in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary. That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. <coughs> if the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. 
The bullet that claimed Gregory Edwards' life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. Do you think he has the second- Well, he did steal all the evidence. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Oh, what in the living hell? This case is wild, dude. Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. Maybe it fell down into the elevator shaft? I... It's a possibility, right? So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tisk tisk tisk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Yeah. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Uh, I'm sorry, Maya. What? I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick, if the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No, no. but you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. It was so certain of it, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I don't. So you killed your father. So, it was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh, no. He's accepting the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. The smug smile screams he did it. Oh my god, Tim might be right on this. Yo, Tim might be. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I should... I know, I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank, I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I I object. Tisk tisk tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Mm -hmm. Ugh, Nick, I I don't know. I say it's Satan, man. He seems like the kind of guy who'd kill to keep his perfect record. I, I mean, he could. All right. Would say it is Von Karma. Where is the second bullet? There's still no there's still no second bullet. There's still no proof. And how do we even prove that Von Karma did kill Gregory Edgeworth? I mean he took all the case files. Even then they couldn't prove who did it. It I don't know. It it could be it could be a big possibility, but there's nothing that points to him. 
Uh, I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. Ah. It must exist. Did Phoenix just drop acid? Maya? The second. Bu Maya's back to save my ass. The second bullet. Wh what? What did you just say? N nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers for Mr. White. Right. Wait, Your Honor. Um. I, uh. The, the second bullet. It, uh. It existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. Karma took it. Wait, a scream? Huh? It, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the, the murderer. No, oh, see. The murderer. Did Karma get shot? Yo. What if it was him that the bullet went through the window and hit? Was he the one on the other side of the glass? The murderer. Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Uh, first of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Murderer had to find it. Murderer didn't need it. I'm gonna go with that one. Because there's no reason for him to fucking take the bullet. If he was shot, if Karma was shot, there would be no need for him to look for the bullet. Because it would be in him. If that's the way that you guys are talking in chat, that's the way I'm gonna go with it. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Ah, the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh, had to take it. <laughs> had to take it. The murderer... Oh, what does this mean? You're thinking too normal, think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why he... Why the bullet had to be taken. No, Vaughn was planning to kill Edgy's dad. Uh, Mr. Wright, it, it's your honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to? Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm going with it too, homie. It's Von Karma. It has to be. Who else? Yo, what? Screw it. What if, yo, if, I, if it's not Von Karma, then it was the bird. Oh, <laughs> it was Polly. Well, for instance, for instance what? Oh, uh, maybe the bullet uh, hit the murderer. The bullet hit the murderer? Just, just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you. Wouldn't you? Wait. Okay. I'm gonna pause it right here for a sec. Say it was Von Karma who got shot, right? That's what we're going with here. Okay? Von Karma did get shot. The when when Edgeworth threw the gun, the gun went off and went through the window of the uh, the elevator, struck Von Karma. Okay? What did Von Karma do after that case? He took a lengthy vacation. Not to relax, not to get, you know, the stress from the case off, but he had to recover. What if that's what happened? I bet you that's what happened. It's not like you could perform surgery right there. <clears throat> you, you know... Wait a second. 
I was just talking off of the top of my head, but what if that's what really happened? The big guy even said he never takes vacations. Exactly, so that getting shot, you would have to stay home for a while, right? I mean, let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot, and they left with the second bullet still inside of them. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside. Yes. Oh, dude, goosebumps, yo. I don't know if anybody else feels that, but holy shit. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. So he used the same hole to shoot in? No, but what if he was the only one there when the elevator opened? Finally. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Mr. Wright, you were truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you said. What do you say? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. Wait, wouldn't Yogi have seen the murder? They were all unconscious. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Uh... I just thought of something really crazy. Yeah, everyone was out when the elevators opened. So, he had... He had Edward's dad there, just slumped over and he took his life. I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy. Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that. Yes, an unusual event for a man that was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. It's effing Karma, bro! <laughs> OMFG! Oh, man. Something wrong, Mr. White? You seem dazed. Uh, no, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicted the uh, possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of the suspect? Uh, oh, should I come out with it? SAY IT, DUDE! OMG, OMG, it takes- it makes sense now, the dad was looking at Yogi. Your Honor. There is a sus suspect, one lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V v Eric, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma! <laughs> Holy shit! Von Karma! Everyone is speechless. 
You mean THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? So it only made sense that when he died, he was looking at the only man he saw. Exactly. Bah! You don't object? Oh, Karma didn't see that coming. Huh. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did you go under the, where did I go under the knife, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Uh, Nick, let's find out who this doctor is. It's no use. Uh, Edward. I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't go undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. <laughs> Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out himself? That's insane. He's not Rambo. <laughs> Shit, wait. He clamps his arm. He does. <coughs> beep, beep his ass? What? What do you mean, beep, beep his ass? No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Tisk tisk. Well, Mr. Wright? Can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Um. I have it somewhere, right? Alright, Von Karma. I'll prove it. And I'll use evidence. I know how to how you like it so much. What? What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot. Do we beep beep him? What gumshoe gave you? Do we really beep beep his ass? Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. He might still have it in him. You... You don't mean... If he didn't have surgery, it's still in him. I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Oh, is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I, I refuse. Oh, he still has it in him! You, you refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. Order, order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of piracy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Oh my god, enough! I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Whew! 
Oh, it's still in him. That son of a bitch left it in him for 15 years. It reacted so... Something's inside his right shoulder. It means karma's fucked by <laughs> But, yo... In reality, the bullet would have moved to his heart. Well... Uh... Jesus. Well, depending on where it was hit, maybe not. The bullet... Mr. Von Karma, you, it was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there was a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. Oh, fucking liar. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Dude, like... You gotta give Karma credit. He's a badass for keeping a bullet in him for 15 years. I guess so. I wonder how much pain me meds was on he on. No, he was probably popping Percocets like Skittles. But, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. M Mr. Wright, well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Yes, I can. I know exactly what to use, too. Of course he can. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. No, no, I have a guardian spirit. Her name is called Maya, you piece of shit. Mm, with no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? what? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Bingo! That's... A bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. What, what do you got? Be gone, Satan! Out of this house! Out of this house! <laughs> well, the bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. Oh, you may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with the weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. Oh, we got his ass now! We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karmer, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets, then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Huh. Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. We'll, then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Um, yeah, not screaming, but he sure is. Holy shit. Holy shit. That scream. 
I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Oh my god. Yeah, we've all read this before. Not doing it again. Get away! Get away from my daddy! Bye! Ah! Oh, it's summoning his demon! <laughs> it's that scream I heard in the elevator. 15 years ago. Von Karma! It was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma. Edgeworth! Only you would dare to defy me! So it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I will, I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death! Death! Oh. What is Satan doing? Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth. Oh, damn. Yeah, man. He is a psycho, dude. He really is. It was a shock like none I had known before. Me? Penalized. It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court. I was in the court records. Give me one sec, guys. I was in the courtroom records. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. <clears throat> I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. Oh, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. Oh, I saw three people inside, all laying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then it was destiny. And pop. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. For killing a, a man that was knocked out? Really? Why would you go ahead and do that? In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. Yeah, because he's Satan. <laughs> Pretty much, dude. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk tisk tisk. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge? What? What are you doing? Do your job, bring an end to this miserable charade. Now end it. But is, is he demanding the judge to give him the guilty verdict? But very well. <laughs> it appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty! Thank God! <laughs> Jail me already. LOL. His perfect thing ends with himself, right? 
And that is all. This court is adjourned. That is my niece Natty walking behind me to get food. December 28th, 5.38 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed? Jen says hi, Natty. She waved hi. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now, it's all just a good memory. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try thank you. I, I see. Th thank you, right. Y you're welcome. <laughs> I think you could have done better than that. Don't push it! Just sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. <laughs> She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would! I'll never forget this! I owe you one, pal! And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? <laughs> Edgy needs a hug. Edgy does need a hug. See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I... I see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I... I feel foolish. Don't worry, take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all! Uh, Lotta? Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quickly. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Uh... I find it amazing. I hated Edgeworth the first time I saw him. Now I have to love him. Right? I told you Edgeworth was cool. But, I mean, I didn't think I would really, really like him like that, but, yeah. Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Oh, God. What? Why? The sad face, Larry. What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kayon's. She, she's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy. There you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration. That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you come along tonight, too. My treat, pal. Uh, uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. <laughs> that's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll, you'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Oh, yeah, it's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? 
I told you Larry stole his lunch money. Well, huh? what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. 38 exactly. No, Nick. Wasn't it exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth at school? 38? No. No, Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to the day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. Uh, Edgeworth, you didn't... No, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Alright, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back at school. When something smells, it's usually the butt. I know, I know. Really, right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Oh, well, this sure is unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You didn't told me. Now, now, Nick. It was... 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? Ah, I'd say so, yes. <laughs> there you have it. Grr. Butts is the black sheep of this group. Yo, he is. Now where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. De death! The death sentence for both of you! <laughs> Man, if I only had known, I'd have become a prosecutor. The same goes for me, uh, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor part of to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edward, want to switch, right? Hey, y'all, line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. And after that, dinner on me. Sweet. Ah, oh, Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Poor Edgeworth. December 29th, 5.02 a.m., Wright and Co. Law Offices. Oh, God, is somebody sneaking in? Well, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Uh, it's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Is he living at the office? Hmm. What's this? A letter? Oh, no. Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you... It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. Uh, I was useless. No, you weren't, Maya. You saved our asses by grabbing that bullet. So, I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Oh, come on. I like Maya. God damn it. Karma felt like a final boss. Do you think... I don't think... I think there's like one more case to this game. And then we move on to the second one. G goodbye. What time is it? Yeah. The first trains for the mountains have already left to the station. 
Oh, did he go for her? Uh, I guess I'm too late. Hey! N Nick! Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Uh, give her a hug. Yeah, hold it. Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Objection, Maya! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one that who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. I'm sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. The bullet? A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay, I'll be waiting. You better come back to me, girl. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Oh, shh. Their train's about to leave. So this is it. See you soon, Maya. Give her a hug, man. Aw, Maya's so cute. Thanks, Nick. Aww. So I hope she comes back. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. Objection! Maybe that was the last case? It was! We finished the first game tonight. Hey, pal. Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Yeah, dude, Karma definitely felt Final Boss-like. He did. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something strange, huh? Oh, wow! We're actually done with the first game! I finally finished a... a Phoenix Wright game! Uh, Nick... Uh, who? Me? You've been working at the cheese shop. That's... Missy's a nice lady. Yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, she's a Hawaii right now, yeah? Oh, he's trying to bang someone else. So, in your honest opinion, guys, what did you think about this? I honestly thought the game was really fun and really well written, honestly. I say honestly a lot. Holy shit. Loved it, Playboy. Awesome. Well... The next time we do play, we're going to be starting up the second game. Unless something happens after this. I mean... 
I honestly didn't see the bird thing. I thought it was all oh, a ha ha joke. That bird thing had me dying. Like, I thought that was funny as hell. <laughs> but, no, these games are great. I, I can't, I can't believe I've honestly waited so long to actually get through these, through at least one of these. We still have so many more to go, too. There's two more in this, then there's two more on the uh, 3DS, and then there's, like, three games on the DS. And I, I kind of want to play them all. Because, yeah, Phoenix Wright, I mean, it's such a fun game, and it's really cool being able to interact with you guys watching. I nearly throw my laptop once, Tim, and I fell you, man. <laughs> it's not go damaging your laptop now. Oh, but this was so cool. I mean, what do you think the next games are going to be like? What type of characters are we going to meet in that? Honestly, I think it's just gonna get crazier from here on out. But this this has been a whole lot of fun, and I I was really happy to be able to actually play through all these. Well, through this at least. But uh, yeah. Andy Timmy actually takes over tomorrow, and uh, that that's his scheduled day. We're gonna be starting our schedule tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, you take over tomorrow, and I think I'll do the, I do what, third, Friday, Saturday, then Sunday is you, um, Sunday starts, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for you, Tim, and then, you know, so on and so forth. I don't know, but I'm sure it'll make us scream and throw shit and have panic attacks. Oh, I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a whole bunch of close calls and everything. Friday rated J, Sat rated J, Sunday Indie Timmy, Monday, yeah, okay, cool. Alright, so yeah, Indie will, Indie will be do doing tomorrow, I take the next two days after that, and then you have Indie for three until I come back, which is cool, which is cool. You've gotten really close to having to restart. I did. Look, it's Ghost Maya. Oh, Mia. Mia. Mia, Mia, Mia. Mia Bar. Mm, Capicom. Oh. <gasps> there is a fifth episode. Oh, what? We're not done. I knew there was a fifth episode! A brand new episode has been added. We talked too soon! Yo, we really did! Alright guys, I know what I'm playing. Uh... What? Friday? Friday! Friday we're gonna come back to Phoenix, right? And... I guess we'll start this and we'll finally finish off, uh... Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Well, we see it here. Um, I don't know, do you guys want to check out the beginning? The little uh, scene that plays? Before I uh, cut it out? We'll have to repeat the scene next time, but still, I, I kind of want to know what it's about. At least get to see the murder in the beginning. What do you guys think? Friday. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, no! They said wait till Friday. Oh, wait. I think I was just saving. Okay. <laughs> Save your progress up to this point. <laughs> Alright. Alright, guys. We'll save that for Friday then, since you guys don't want to know. Man. But anyway. Again, thanks for coming out and uh, played along, really. It's a lot of fun, and, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys come out again. We had a lot of stragglers come in 
we had one guy say something, but he disappeared. But, um, hopefully, you know, they all stick around next time. Because I watched that viewer thing jump to about eight at one point. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks guys for coming out. And, uh, yeah, it's always fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So, uh, well, actually, no, Indy will see you guys in the next one. So, uh, bye bye